gentlemen. I'm Jeff Roberts, executive editor at Decrypt. Um, I'm delighted to welcome Jesse Powell, C co-founder and CEO of Kraken and general crypto OG. Welcome, Jesse. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, anyways, thanks for joining us. Um, we're here to talk about the future, Kraken and the metaverse, but I um, actually want to go uh, begin with the past and revisit the conversation we had in Wyoming a couple years ago where you told me that um, you know, you, uh, it's about basically Magic the Gathering, a, uh, you know, a popular board game, and I was to, a surprised to find out how many crypto people played it, including Vitalik and so on, and you were one of those players, right? That's right. Yeah, Jed McCaleb, Roger Veer, the list goes on. Yeah, and I mean, I think some of our uh, OGs out there, too, will know the infamous Mt. Gox, uh, you know, the bankrupt exchange stood for uh, Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. The reason I'm bringing all this up, of course, is, um, you know, it sort of occurred to me, Magic, the game, is kind of a metaverse, sort of like a pre-digital metaverse, if that makes any sense. I'm just wondering, you know, sort of, you know, sort of interesting, all these crypto people played that game, and now we're going into the real digital metaverse where, you know, crypto is everywhere. I'm just kind of curious, maybe I'm trying to draw a line that's not there, but do you see any parallels? What it is? What is it about gaming and those sort of worlds that that you know attracts crypto people, and why why is crypto going to be such a big part of it? I think a lot of us in crypto grew up as as nerds into fantasy and sci-fi, and um, you know I think we spent a lot of time in books and, and on computers and and in um, you know a world that that was not the physical world, you know, in in our own imaginations. Um, or, you know, on the computer in, in a virtual chat room. So I think this all feels very comfortable to people. Um, you know, Magic the Gathering is its own little bubble. Uh, you have, you know, these sort of proto metaverses in the chat rooms of, uh, of AOL back in the day. Uh, you've got Second Life, World of Warcraft, you know, RuneScape. People grew up play, playing these games. And I think that uh, this uh, new stage of the metaverse, you know, where you have these goods, uh, these virtual tokens, um, or these this clothing or whatever it is you can take between these different platforms, I think is what people are really excited about now. And, and when did you first uh, see this or suspect that NFTs would become what they are in the metaverse, you know, would emerge as it did? I remember CryptoKitties in 2016. Did you see it then or even before then when you were first dabbling with Bitcoin? Or just tell me about, you know, your own personal sort of, you know, how did you anticipate it would play out versus how it has played out? Yeah, the idea for NFTs goes way back to the earliest days of Bitcoin. There's an idea called colored coins on Bitcoin, uh, which are basically Bitcoins that are uniquely identified uh, to, to represent something else, proof of ownership of something else. And, you know, going back to the earliest days of Bitcoin, uh, we thought the blockchain could be used for tracking proof of ownership of things, provenance, um, tokenizing other things like stocks, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I think we saw this coming. We, we weren't really um, expecting it to explode the way that it did uh, in the last year or so. And I think a lot of that has to do with just some mainstream projects, you know, NBA Top Shots being like one example, um, the CryptoPunks really taking off the Board Ape Yacht Club. You know, I think that um, somehow this has captured the mainstream uh, consciousness. And I think that it it's really relatable to people because uh, you know, the kids that, are, that have grown up over the last 20 years, you know, really are familiar with this idea of uh, a, a digital store of value, digital representation of value, virtual clothes, virtual gear for your, your virtual avatar. Um, so I think like that's that's all very familiar to people. You know, I think um, what's new is this concept of like, you know, maybe we can have these different metaverses. Uh, which are some, maybe some decentralized, maybe some not, but they all sort of respect this common layer of like these assets on the blockchain that you can take between uh, different, different platforms. Um, yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Um, but I do have a question for you. In the first generation of crypto, so much of the kind of company or corporate side of it was the exchanges, you know, obviously Mt. Gox for better and mostly worse, but also, you know, Kraken, Coinbase, Gemini, you know, they were sort of, you know, crypto was the exchanges. If you had an associated company with crypto, it was always an exchange. But in the emerging NFT era, we're seeing sort of new platforms, you know, OpenSea, obviously, but Nifty Gateway and stuff. So what is the role of exchanges, including Kraken, in defining the NFT era? Yeah, so I think exchanges can continue to play a similar role that they have over the last decade, which is to be that super easy uh, on-ramp for new new people coming into the space, you know, you don't 
come in already having Bitcoin or already having Ether or, or Solana, you've got to get that from somewhere. And I think exchanges are a really good bridge for those people. You know, they're they're regulated. Uh, they they work with governments. You know, they're they're connected to the existing on ramps and the legacy st- system, which is largely like bank, bank accounts and credit cards, uh, which you can't just plug you know your DeFi smart contract into directly. So, uh, I think exchanges are um, a really good on ramp for those people. You know, they're the shepherds. They have customer service teams. Um, they can help people get through that first stage before maybe they want to go on to do uh, more advanced things in DeFi. Um, yeah, I want to come back to this in a sec, but in terms of Kraken, I mean, Coinbase has announced or, you know, I think is in the process of launching an NFT platform. Gemini is closely tied, or I think they own Nifty Gateway. You know, Binance is doing stuff too. Is Kraken, what's, what's, what's sort of your plan for Kraken on the NFT world? We do have something in the oven for NFTs. You know, I used to run a, uh, an e-commerce platform for virtual goods, um, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, Diablo. You know, we did like 20 different games. I also used to run an art gallery. So um, I've got some experience in this space. We're, we're, we're cooking up something that's we think is going to be pretty awesome. And uh, it'll be out hopefully toward the end of this year, early next year. Um, will it be a challenge just given that Kraken, I think, is sort of used by crypto veterans and, you know, professional traders in terms of reaching, um, you know, sort of consumers who might not be too familiar with, with crypto? Do you think that's going to be in Kraken's wheelhouse? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the consumer part of our business is is much newer. As you said, you know, we kind of started out with crypto OGs and, and a real professional trading platform and have sort of moved into the consumer space more recently. Um but, you know, I think I think we're all going to be competing for the same kind of demographic, these people who are interested in, in NFTs and are coming into the space for the first time. So I do still think it's anybody's game. You know, I think Kraken has a very strong reputation and brand in the space and is known for uh, really understanding the crypto audience and the crypto ethos. So um, hopefully that comes across and hopefully we manage to capture what people are looking for with our product. Yeah, and sticking with this theme just a moment longer. What about usability? Because you know, I've been telling my coworkers I finally got my hands dirty with Axie Infinity last week, and my God, I, I'm sorry, it was a horrible experience. I had to transfer uh, ETH from a MetaMask wallet to their wallet, and two hundred dollars got vaporized. And then I had to buy, you know, three of these creatures, and it just was not a friendly experience. You know, who's taking the lead in smoothing out that UX and making this? You know, we always talk about in tech the Netscape moment and a browser where suddenly it all comes together for the normies. I'm not seeing this yet in in the crypto world so who's going to make you know the nft world and the metaverse approachable because frankly i mean you know facebook i think can do it i think most of us hope they don't do it it'd be better if you know sort of i think people like you did it but i'm not seeing anyone take the obvious lead in making this stuff accessible so can you comment on that yeah some of that comes down to the chain you know um the, the fees on ethereum are relatively high uh compared to the fees on solana or or some other chains so i think you'll see this transition of of new projects move to change with lower fees. So I think that's part of it, but this is like a constant ongoing cycle where something becomes successful, gets more expensive, and then people move on to another chain. Um, there are obviously scaling solutions coming to Ethereum as well. So that hopefully will solve some of the fee problems. Um, but as far as uh, you know, who's gonna win the metaverse game or who builds the best experience, you know, I, I really think it's gonna be fragmented and, and sort of federated in a way across the chain where you have You'll have these common assets that exist on the chain and you can move between quote unquote metaverses. I don't think there'll be any any single metaverse. You know, you could think of World of, World of Warcraft as one metaverse and uh, Diablo 2 as a different metaverse and RuneScape as a third metaverse or, or Axie or Facebook. And, um, you know, some of these will be games uh, and, and they won't have items that are compatible across the games, but maybe there'll be some skins that are compatible across the games. And I, I think it's the same for, for Facebook and other kind of proprietary uh, platforms where I think they'll support these uh, blockchain assets and some representation of them in their world. And um, they'll all have different rules. And, and I don't think anyone's going to have a, a monopoly on this. Um, 
Yeah, and again with the same theme, would what you said also apply to blockchains? Because, you know, I think it, it's hard not to think in historical, you know, analogies, you know, even though they might not always be accurate. But i old enough to remember the early days of Silicon Valley and search. And there was once upon a time there was like eight search engines and you didn't know who it was going to be. Was it going to be Alta Vista or this or this? And then it became Google. Um, you know, to what degree is sort of, is there going to be one chain to rule them all or is there room for a sort of a thriving ecosystem where there's five or 10 or 20 chains that your average consumer is going to be uh, interacting with, say, two or five years from now? I think there is room for, for a lot of different chains that, that serve a lot of different purposes. And if you have a specific use case in mind, you can design a chain that, that does that thing very well, uh, where, where it may have an advantage over a generalized system. Um, you know, I think Bitcoin is, is still the best at storing value. Uh, I think it's still the best at security. So, you know, I, I don't see Bitcoin being disrupted in the near term. Um, you know, I think the, the game for smart contracts is, is totally up for grabs. You know, I think Ethereum is a dominant player now, but you see uh, Polkadot and Solana and, and some other chains coming up that, that maybe could steal a lot of that thunder from Ethereum uh, with regard to smart contracts. So I think we'll continue to see an evolution of these chains. I think it's anybody's game right now. And, and I think we, we ultimately end up in a world where there are lots of successful chains that, that are operating simultaneously. I mean, and just going out to the kind of blue skies, you know, a broader picture stuff. I mean, you've obviously saw a lot of how crypto un unfold earlier. So I'd like you to take us into the future a little bit in terms of like, you know, what's what's going to happen next? Is, are we going to an era of DAOs? You know, is the metaverse underhyped or overhyped? Or what's, you know, t take us into the future. What's going to happen next? Um, I think the metaverse is probably a little bit overhyped right now. But I'm just thinking back, you know, on my own experience, we've seen um, various versions of metaverses over time. You know, I mean, you could even look at Fortnite as a metaverse, Roblox, um, Minecraft, uh, you know, Second Life as sort of one of the very first um, iterations of this. And, um, you know, these are all successful to, to different degrees and for different purposes and different niche audiences. Um, so I think that, you know, it's, I think people are making it out to be something more, more than it is. You know, we've, we've had this. And so, uh, you know, I, I think the next phase is really these interoperable assets, and and maybe that's game changing. But um, I also don't think anyone really has, you know, th there's it's not going to be a winner take all space there. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat the second part of your question? Huh. Um, no, I think I'm just sort of asking you to predict the future, which you know isn't easy. But a related question is, um, you know, in the history of tech, as far as, you know, I've covered it for about 15 years, and typically it's, uh, you know, gaming, you know, video games are the first application where new tech catches on. Well, frankly, porn is usually the first one, followed by games, followed by other applications. But what I find so neat about NFTs is I'm seeing it thriving in non kind of techy intense areas like sports, um, even like art and art galleries. And I'm kind of curious as sort of the metaverse or whatever you want to call it emerges, is it going to follow the traditional pattern of, you know, porn and gaming followed by this, followed by that and trickling down? Or is there going to be several of these worlds going to emerge at once, all with kind of distinct cultures and people within them? Yeah, I, I think like if you look back at Second Life as an example, there is some of that there, there are uh, sort of like pornographic areas of the game and there are gambling areas of the game. Uh, and they're like very kid friendly ver versions uh, or areas of the game. Um, you know, so I think there will be these these niche areas that, that break out. Um, you know, I don't know that uh, porn or gambling, you know, benefits, especially from from the metaverse or from some sort of like immersive 3D environment. You know, I think. Um, if anything, you know, these things just, uh, you know, you probably don't want your um, your pornographic like uh, engagements like managed on the blockchain because, you know, it's just like very traceable and it's probably like the last thing you want, uh, you know, um, carved into a stone like for all time. So uh, I think, you know, that stuff is probably more likely to stay like where it is with with traditional finance. Okay, well, on that note, always fascinating to talk to you, Jesse. You're always a good interview, and I like where it's going. That was uh, Jesse Powell, the CEO and founder of Kraken.